Hello everyone and welcome to Money Talks. Money Talks is a financial literacy program of the CFS Society Nigeria. Smart Uzechi is my name. Uh, today on the program we will be discussing understanding taxes and tax planning. Understanding taxes and tax planning. And my guest on the program this evening is none other than Dr. Chris David. Dr. Chris David is a futurist and a tax expert. He holds a doctorate degree in strategic leadership from Regent University, USA, a certificate in behavioral insight and public policy from Harvard Kennedy School, USA, a certificate in strategic foresight from University of Houston Technology, USA, a postgraduate program in data science and business analytics from the University of Texas at Austin, USA, an MBA in financial services from the University of East London, UK, a bachelor's degree in applied accounting from Oxford Brookes University, also in the UK. Dr. Chris David is a member, Association of Professional Futurists, member, Institute of Directors, Nigeria, Fellow Institute of uh, Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Fellow Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Dr. Chris is a thought leader on tax policy, economic policy, monetary policy, and leadership development. Dr. Chris David, good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us on Money Talks this evening. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. My pleasure to be on your show today. That's fine. And to you, the listener, we this program is hugely, hugely interactive, meaning that you can join us at some particular point in time when we open the phone lines. The lines are 0700 or you can send messages to us on WhatsApp 0817-313-6193 uh, Should you have any question for Dr. Chris in line with what we're discussing this evening, understanding taxes and tax development, any questions you may have on taxation and taxes, you can call and ask that question or make contributions to the program as you may have as we proceed. Uh, Dr. Chris, uh, let me start by asking you, uh, if I may, what exactly is taxation itself and then what is tax planning? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, taxation um, is uh, a compulsory levy that is uh, imposed by a public authority. By a public authority, we mean uh, it has to be a uh, government, either at the federal level, state, or local government. And it is imposed on income or gains that accrue to uh, individuals, or companies that is uh, uh, taxation and uh, it has to be backed uh, by law so if there is any payment that um, you are being asked to make and that payment is not to a public authority or uh, is not backed by law such a payment is uh, is an extortion and it, you have every right not to uh, oblige to such a, uh, a payment. And uh, you talk about tax planning. <clears throat> now, we said tax is a compulsory levy. However, within the scope of the tax laws, the various tax laws, there are various avenues, there are various provisions that allow uh, people or companies to um, adopt, to reduce or minimize their tax payment. So when an individual or a company is taking opportunity of uh, those uh, loopholes, we said uh, that person is engaged in tax planning. So to summarize, we say tax planning is when a 
an individual economy uh, organize its tax affairs to take advantage of the various loopholes in the tax laws. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. David. Uh, I'm very sure that uh, you're well aware and very familiar with this particular saying that only two things are certain in life. Uh, one is death and tax men and women say that the other one is taxes. Let me ask you, why do we say taxes is one of those things and then why must I pay tax? Okay, yeah. So that, uh, that is the quotation that... Uh uh, it's for, uh, it was publicized by uh, Benjamin Fr- Franklin. And um, uh, like if you, you can deduce that from the definition of taxes that I say, I said it is a compulsory levy. So if you earn income or an individual or a community, you earn income and that income has been defined or stated in the tax laws, then you must pay uh, the tax. Then, when you also consume most of the uh, goods and services we consume are liable to tax, and the tax you pay on such um, consumptions are, is called VAT. So, whether you like it or not, you are paying taxes in one way or the other. So, if you bring it uh, close uh, to the Nigerian context, you hear they say so many people say, "Oh, we are, we are not paying taxes." Or well, that is not true, because um, there is no way you will exist in this planet Earth that you will not consume, you will not buy and sell. So when you engage in those economic transactions, uh, you are actually uh, paying some taxes. Mm. And now that you have explained to us uh, why we must pay taxes. The next question to ask you, because people live in cosmopolitan cities, uh, they find people every now and then coming to collect taxes and all of that. So the question, Dr. David, is to whom do we now pay these taxes? And then what institutions are really the relevant tax authorities? Or is it anybody who present themselves uh, to tax us that we should pay taxes to? No. So, uh, like, uh, you, you can also deduce that from that uh, definition I gave earlier, that the composite levy paid to a public authority, that is the government, either at the federal level, state or local government. So, in Nigeria, there are relevant tax authorities. So, at the federal level, the relevant tax authority at the federal level is called the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Mm. While in the 36 states, including uh, FCT, there is what we call the Internal Revenue Service. So, for instance, in Lagos State, we have the Lagos Internal Revenue Service. While um, you have in Ogun State, your own Ogun State Internal Revenue Service, uh, and so forth and so forth, uh, for all the um, states in Nigeria, and you now have the FCT Internal Revenue Service. Then at the local government, too, you have the local government revenue authorities. And there are specific taxes that they are supposed to collect. So it's not just every um, uh, levy that is uh, brought that you are supposed to pay. Uh, You are supposed to now know uh, what are the taxes that the local uh, state uh, government is supposed to collect. What are the taxes that uh, the state internal revenue is supposed to collect and what are the taxes that federal inland revenue taxes uh, federal inland revenue authority is supposed to collect so uh, there is what is called the um, taxes and uh, levies um, uh, legislation which was ap- approved uh, sometime in 2015 and within that legislation we have about um, uh, 50 or more taxes that have been approved and these approved taxes and levies are divided into what the federal government is supposed to collect what the state government is supposed to collect and what the uh, local government is supposed to the local government are supposed to collect or be collecting mm. okay let, let's go to the various forms of taxes right now and um, uh, who is supposed to pay them. I want you to tell us, Dr. David, uh, the types of taxes individuals 
artisans, sole proprietors are, are supposed to be paying? You know, are they supposed to be subjected to uh, from VAT to income tax to withholding tax? Are individuals, artisans, uh, and sole proprietors, are they supposed to be subjected to these forms of taxes? Okay, so before we delve into that, let's first of all understand the form of uh, businesses that uh, individuals can engage to. Um, you have, once you register your company as a limited liability company, then you'll be exposed to taxes at the federal level, that is the company income tax. But if you register your company as a business name or enterprise uh, ventures, then you will not be paying uh, company income tax. Uh, rather, you will not be exposed to what is called a personal income tax. However, whether you are a limited liability company or uh, a registered business name, you will be exposed to uh, VAT. So let's look at um, an individual uh, who is uh, uh, operating as an SME or a business name. So with respect to uh, income tax now, what we currently have in the provision of the t- uh, tax law says that once your turnover is 25 million or below, then you will be exempted from paying income tax. Mm. That also is applicable to VAT. That is, once your turnover is uh, less than 25 uh, million, then you are not, as a a business entity, you are not expected to register or be charging. VAT. However, that does not stop you from paying VAT because when you buy from uh, the market or you buy from any company uh, whose turnover is above 25 million, as the company is selling to you, then you will have to pay uh, VAT. But certainly, one tax that is uh, uh, individual, whether artisans uh, will, like, will, will pay is the personal income tax, except where it can be established that your income is less than the minimum wage, which is currently at 30000 uh, per month, then uh, your, you will be exempted from personal income tax. But if your income that you earn, that is, you are a business name, mm. you run an enterprise, you run a business venture, as the way uh, you, you, the way you name, you, you count the name of your company, but it is not limited, mm. then the tax you are supposed to be paying is personal income tax. Okay. So if you are in legal state, you are going to be paying personal income tax to Lagos Internal Revenue Service. And you will be required to file annual returns once a year. So... The annual returns for 2022 is going to be due for filing by 31st March of 2023. So if you are a business name, uh, you operate a business as a business venture or enterprise, uh, the law requires you to file your returns with Lagos State Internal Revenue. If you are resident in Lagos State, Mm. on or before 31st March 2023. Wow. So um, you, you need to go over that again because some persons uh, would need to hear this because the, the insinuation out there is that, oh, if my company is not uh, a limited liability, if I'm just running a business with a business registration, then I, I'm exempted from paying tax. So h- how, how can this be tracked? Maybe somebody who, what are, for people who are working, maybe somebody is working and is doing a business by the side with a, re, a, a business name, just register no limited liability, and the person is paying income tax based on their nine to five. How does that affect the person now? Well, uh, well what that means is that you are not the person, such a person, such a person or individual is not actually paying 
uh, the correct tax, um, the income that is uh, uh, earning or the profit from the uh, ac business activity engaged by that uh, a small business venture is also liable to tax. So what the individual is supposed to do is supposed to actually file returns uh, in addition to what uh, has been paid for him uh, through the PAYE uh, scheme by his employer. So you file additional returns as, uh, uh, based on the income or profit you earn from uh, that business venture. Dr. David, if they don't file it, what's the, what's the, what's the penalty here? Yeah, the, yeah the, the penalty ranges from uh, 10% of um, the uh, amount of tax that is uh, supposed to be paid that has not been paid, and uh, interest at the prevailing uh, commercial rate. So that is what is going to be uh, added to... Um, to the tax liability. And that is one uh, aspect too that we talk when we talk about tax planning. The first, the first uh, step to tax planning is actually tax compliance. So in order for you to avoid unnecessary tax payments, because the 10% that you are paying and the 20, 20 or 21% interest they are going to pay. So when you add that together, so you have uh, uh, an average of uh, uh, between 29 to 31% that you are going to be paying on the amount of tax that you've not paid. So that 31% is avoidable. Mm. So that is the first step to tax planning. So you have to comply first so that you avoid paying what we call unnecessary uh, tax payments. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, in case you just joined us now, uh, I've been talking with Dr. Chris David on the subject understanding taxes and tax planning, and it's on Money Talks right here on Inspiration ninety two point three FM. In case you have questions or clarifications to seek concerning this particular topic, or you want to make a contribution, you can now call us on the telephone zero seven zero zero nine two three nine two three nine two three. That's zero seven hundred nine two three nine two three nine two three, or send us a message on WhatsApp zero eight one seven three one three six one nine three. Any questions relating to taxes, how you can plan your taxes, uh, difficulties you have maybe in filing for your taxes or in the payment of your taxes, double taxation, all of those issues you have with taxes, you can call in now and uh, ask questions, make contributions or seek for uh, clarifications here on Money Talks on 92.3 Inspiration FM. Money Talks is a program brought to you by CFA Society Nigeria. Uh, if you're calling, please make sure you're calling us from a quiet place. Hello, good evening to you. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. Please help us to turn down the volume on your radio set. Okay. Now? Yes, all right now. Tell us your name and where you're listening to us from. Uh, I'm Mr. Martin Fide. I'm calling from Okumaja. Uh, okay, go ahead quickly. Uh -huh. the question, my question is this. Um, you have just opened a new business. Uh, like, let me say, a business, uh, you are a business, you are running a business named Enterprise. And you have not even started to operate the business. Uh, the tax uh, men will just uh, approach you and say, oh, yeah, look at the paper for, for you to enable you to pay tax. They don't even care to ask you whether you have made profit or how are you doing. Because they are very much interested in collecting tax. What do you do in that aspect? Hmm. Okay, thank you so much. You keep listening. I'm sure our guest uh, will answer the question. Uh, you listen from the radio, he'll provide answers to that. You can call us on 0700-923-923-923 or send us a message on WhatsApp 0817-313-6193. We're talking understanding taxes and tax planning. Dr. Chris David is our guest on the program today. Dr. Chris, you, you heard him there. And uh, this question is coming in from WhatsApp. He said, I have an LLC 
with a turnover of less than 25 million and i was uh, chased to pay income taxes in the past can i get refund from firs uh, you can just deal with these two questions quickly sir okay let, let me deal with the uh, uh, last one um if uh, the the law that the provision that i discussed came into effect um, in uh, 2020 that is um, uh, uh, the finance act so if uh, that payment was made prior to 2020 uh, the law then um, requires that everyone should pay tax there was no uh, threshold or exemption uh, for small businesses at that time so um, what we need to put in context is that when was this payment uh, demanded now for the first question uh, we need to distinguish between uh, levies and um, some taxes. Mm. Like I already mentioned, there are three um, relevant tax authorities. So, for instance, you have uh, maybe the, the local government. Um, the local government are supposed to co- collect uh, uh, shop uh, and store uh, permits or uh, levies or fees. So if you just open your, um, your little kiosk, uh, before you start business, then you, uh, the local government can approach you and say, you need to pay um, a, a levy, uh, which is to enable you to operate uh, this uh, shop. Usually, it should be minimal. And there's what is also called business premises levy, mm. which is um, collected by uh, uh, state government. So if that is what... Um, they are asking you to pay, those ones are in order. But any person that's saying that you should pay, uh, you pay tax on your income, you cannot pay tax on your income until you have declared your income. That is, you are supposed to have what is called an accounting period. When did you start the business? When are you supposed to work? finalize your book and say, okay, I have done business, for instance, let's say from January to December this year. So uh, December becomes your accounting year end. So your accounting period starts from January to December. Now, in that December, you are required to prepare or declare your tax returns and which will be on the business you have carried out from January to December of that year. Now, if you have not done business, what you are supposed to do when they come for you to come to collect us from you, say, I just uh, started business. I have not declared my income. That is, I have not declared either profit or loss. Mm. So when you explain that to them, uh, nobody will force you to pay income tax. The only thing that you'll be required to pay will just be uh, the required uh, levies or the approved levies that local government are supposed to collect and uh, let's say business premise levy. Okay. Okay, Dr. Chris, uh, somebody is asking a quick question here. I would appreciate if you can answer just maybe in under a minute so that we can talk about uh, other issues before we leave the program this evening. Uh, it said, good evening. At what amount will an individual earn? before he will be eligible to pay a personal income tax. Zubi is asking this question from my papa. Yes, once your income is above minimum wage, mm. you're required to pay income tax. So it's, as of today, it's only minimum wage earners. Or 30 people earning 30,000 naira per month or below that are exempt from tax. Even if they were not working for the government? Yes. Okay. Even if you are for a private organization, anywhere, if your if your income is less than thirty thousand, if you earn income thirty thousand naira uh, a month or less, you are not required to pay personal income tax. Okay, for for people who are doing business, private businesses who don't have uh, records, uh, like financial records, how do we determine uh, their income since they're not keeping records? Yeah, so, um, you know, when we talk about tax planning, these are some of the issues that come into 
tax planning because um, some some people just like the first person that asked question. Let's assume that he has done business for more than one year, mm. and he is now the tax person. I'm now come to say pay your tax. Now, because the person did not have any record at all, it will be very difficult for him to prove to the tax authority that I have not earned profit. But if from the beginning you have kept record, and this record can be simple as bank statement. So you operate your business through the bank statement, through the banking system. So you, you, when you sell for each of your sales, you pay it into the bank. When you want to buy product too, you buy from uh, your bank account. So the bank account alone serves as a primary source of your records. So for you to be able to minimize your tax or ensure that you pay your correct tax, one of the first things you must do is to keep your, the records of your uh, business uh, transaction. So it is very important, and that's why um, if you can't do that on your own, you cannot engage the services of uh, accountant. There are small accounting firms, or there are even uh, individual account, uh, accountants that offer accounting services. You can engage an accountant that can come to your uh, office, maybe on a monthly basis or twice uh, um, uh, monthly, to look at, oh, what have you done? And they will help you prepare uh, 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 your records. So that will enable you to file your tax returns at the end of the period. And uh, it will save you from paying unnecessary taxes, just as I've uh, mentioned. But if you don't have those records, it is usually very difficult to prove to the tax authority that you have not earned income. Mm. Dr. Chris, we just have a few seconds left to the end of the program. We're not going to be able to take any more calls or read our messages, but I just want you to answer to this very quickly. Uh, now that uh, uh, bringing it all home, let's let's come back to investment and savings. Very quickly, in 30 seconds, Dr. Chris, how does taxes impact savings and investment? Yeah, very, very important. This also links to tax planning. For instance, if you have... I'm talking as an individual now, or small uh, uh, company. Um, if you have um, excess cash, let's say you have maybe like 100K that you are not using immediately, rather than keeping it in your current account, you can actually keep that money in a savings account. And when you keep that money in a savings account, whatever interest you are earning from uh, your, from that savings, um, uh, a withholding tax will be deducted. And that withholding tax becomes the final tax. So you earn additional income, but just a little uh, portion of it is taken as tax. So mm-hmm. rather than keeping your money in a current account and uh, you are not earning anything, you put it on savings which will make you earn uh, some little additional money and you pay little tax. Then when you talk about investment, uh, there are various um, options of uh, investment. But a very uh, simple one is buying shares. So when you buy shares from uh, this uh, quoted company, uh, at the end of the period, um, they they pay what is called dividend. Mm. So when, when they pay you dividend, they will deduct what is called withholding tax. And that withholding tax becomes the final tax. So All right. uh, you, you put your money into investment, you earn additional money, but the, you are paying just little tax from it. So these are some of the uh, avenues where you can uh, deploy your idle funds. Dr. Chris David, thank you so much uh, for your time on Money Talks here on Inspiration 92.3 FM, discussing understanding taxes and tax planning. We appreciate you, Dr. Chris. Thank you for having me today. Mm. 
That's our show for today. You can go uh, to our socials, follow us at CFA Society NG, both on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, check us out on LinkedIn and Facebook, and as well as YouTube as CFA Society.